I have a solar panel right here that you may think you don't need. Maybe you do. Let's review it. Now let's say you're going on a multi-day adventure that may require you to have more power than what can be provided by your portable power banks. Or you simply don't know how much power you'll need, but it's important that you don't run short. For instance, you may be a hunter out there for a week or so, way in a very remote place, making sure you have GPS or emergency communications always powered up is crucial. Or maybe you're setting up base camp from where you'll be doing day hikes for multiple days. Or you're on a multi-day photo shoot or video shoot. Your navigation, emergency devices, smart watches, you know, camera gear, flashlight, all that stuff is pretty important. Or maybe you're camping in a place for a number of days that does not provide plug-ins for your power needs. Having a nice power safety net helps you enjoy the trip even more. Now in all these cases, everyone in your group could carry an excess number of charged battery banks and you might hope that no one runs out of power. Or what if you could carry a solar charging station that does not weigh more than all those batteries combined and that would give you essentially limitless power. MH Powers recently asked me to review their 40 watt solar panel. By the way, they have systems that provide like up to 400 watts, but we're just going to look at the 40 watt one here. This system is larger and heavier than I would normally carry on a backpacking trip, but in circumstances like I previously mentioned, where the carry is not too far and I have critical power needs, this is a reasonable and cost effective option. Now this is a foldable panel that can fit into the back of your backpack. It folds down to 12 and a half by 8.8 .8 inches and it's about inch and a half thick. Now doing a quick look at the construction of this thing, it's made from sturdy scratch resistant material. It has solid construction and stitching on the seams is really good. It has strong velcro and they put a reinforced zipper on the pouch protecting the output port panel. And there's an Apple pouch here to store your cords or phone or power banks or other devices while they're charging or while in transit. Well, what's the weight of this thing? Without the cable, it weighs just a little over three pounds, which is about the same weight as two or three of these larger handheld battery banks. It has sturdy grommet holes in the corners and it comes with two carabiners so that you can hang it or attach it to a tree or anything. It also comes with a USB-C to C cord and it has an iPhone adapter for it and a seven in one solar cable that is compatible with almost every power bank on the market, like 99% I'm told. Now I didn't survey every power bank in the world, but there's a lot of options here. As for the waterproof rating on this unit, it has a IP65 waterproof protection rating. If you're not familiar with this rating, it's a standard rating system for mechanical and electrical devices to test for solid particle and liquid ingress protection. This is where the IP comes from, ingress protection. Now the six is in the position for the solid particle ingress protection. The six means that uh, enclosures are dust free. So no dust enters into any enclosures after significant and rigorous testing. The five in this rating, IP65, is for liquid ingress protection. The five means that they use water jets where the water is projected by a 6.3 millimeter or 0.25 inch nozzle for three minutes at a rate of one minute per square meter with a pressure of 4.4 PSI, which is 30 kPa, from a distance of three meters, that's 9.8 feet, <laughs> at a volume of 12.5 meters per minute. <coughs> Now that's a lot to remember, so just remember this. Essentially this unit will stand up to a pretty good rain for a short period of time. So don't leave it out in the rain for more than a few minutes and don't submerge it in water. My general advice is to just keep it dry. Now let's look through the power specs and proper operation of this unit. There's all kinds of electrical specs on this. Most of it is only meant to be understood by electrical engineers. <laughs> so let's bypass most of that stuff and break down what is most important for you. And that is power output. 
The power output is all about how much power this unit is capable of delivering, which translates for you how fast you can charge your devices. Power is measured in watts. So this is a 40 watt maximum power output. If you aren't familiar with the formula for wattage, power, wattage is the product of voltage and current. So it's voltage times current measured in amps equals watts. The max voltage on this unit is 19 volts and the max current is 2 amps. That equals 38 watts. So how come it's not 40? Well, it's because some of the power is absorbed by the internal electronics. So that's why it's about 2 watts short of 40. But just for the sake of this discussion, let's call it 40 watts. But because it's a 40 watt system, doesn't mean that you'll have 40 watts of power charging your device. It depends on how much current or amps your device demands. And keep in mind, each output has current limitations by design. Let me break down these two factors. I plug my Samsung Galaxy 21S into the USB-C output and I measured the voltage and current going to my phone with a simple little multimeter. The phone had super fast charging enabled on it, so it read 5 volts at 1 amp. So doing the math, voltage time current, that's 5 watts, not 40. Now this unit has three output ports, a USB, a USB-C, and a DC output. The USB-C output, for instance, for a 5 volt device, like my phone, can supply up to 3 amps. So 5 times 3 is 15 watts. Again, not 40. But if your phone is designed to, to draw only 1 amp, as my phone, I'll get only 5 watts max to charge my phone. By the way, the USB and USB-C ports can output 5, 9, or 12 volts. And that's automatically determined by the circuitry it will automatically supply the appropriate amount of voltage for your device. The DC port is from 7 to 28 volts at 5 amps max. Don't let this electronic theory or math turn you off here. What you should take away from all of this is that the wattage output is going to be depending on what you plug into your unit and it will very likely be smaller, maybe much smaller than the max rating of the panel. Now I have other videos that explain all this a bit more and I'll provide those links down below. But please note that I'm not trying to discredit this unit. All solar panels on the market will communicate their max power capabilities the same way. It's not deceptive. They are technically correct. But you should understand how this all works. There are two other major factors that impact power output. The first factor is that for max power out you must have max sun intensity. Even just a little bit of sun blockage from the clouds or shade on any one of the panels will reduce the output. And the second point is that the alignment of the panels to the sun must be at or about 90 degrees to get optimal power output. So if you're carrying the solar panel draped off the back of your backpack, most of the panels will be facing behind you and parallel to the ground. The panels won't be at 90 degrees to the sun unless it's like rising or setting you know, directly behind you. So also consider that you may be hiking through shaded areas or at times be facing away from the sun. So the direction you are hiking in relation to the sun will make a difference. However, even with less than full sunlight on these panels, they will produce power. But it won't be the optimal unless these conditions are met. There are instructions on the back of the panel that show you how to set this up. It's easy to set up but it's very important to do this properly. Let's talk about the red light. There's a red light on the output port module within the pouch on this panel. When the panel is set up properly and the sun intensity is enough for it to produce power, the red indicator light will come on. If it's off, there is not enough sunlight for it to produce any power. The light is not an indicator that your devices are charging. To verify your devices are charging, you'll want to refer to the device you're trying to charge, which should have its own charging indicator. Let's talk about the three output ports. This solar panel has three output ports. All three can be used at the same time as long as sun intensity is strong enough. This is why the setup is so important. All right, let's talk about fast charging. The solar panel has a built-in safety protection system that regulates the current for fast charging. For instance, my phone has fast charging capability, and so it will accommodate that. 
Fast charging is only possible when one port is being used. If you have one device connected and it has fast charging, and if you connect the second device, it will switch to the normal charging mode. This helps prevent overheating because the higher the current, the higher generated heat on the electrical components in this unit. So this is a great safety feature. One more thing to note here that's kind of techy is the ETFE cell type. I want to call your attention to the fact that these panels are e ETFE panels. This is the type of material used when manufacturing the panel. This material makes the panel easy to maintain. You can wipe it off with a wet cloth very easily. They perform well, although diminished, in low light conditions. They are flexible and lightweight. They can tolerate high temps. They have good efficiency. This one has 23.5 maximum conversion, which is hard to get that high of a conversion rate on the market for any portable panel. So the point is when you see ETFE cell type, it means that they are using the best type of panel for something portable like this. The last point here is that the warranty is an 18 month warranty. So that's pretty good for a portable panel. Okay, so finally, let's get into my testing and review. I use this to charge a number of my devices separately. My 60,000 milliamp hour power, power bank, my phone, my 10,000 and my 20,000 milliamp hour power banks, my GPS unit, my smartwatch, my flashlight, the whole thing. I didn't do any specific tests on how long it took for each one of these because the charging cycles on each one of these units is a little bit different. It's kind of non-linear and due to the type of charging circuitry in each one of them, it was just a little bit more math than what I wanted to do here. But I can say this that the charge time was much faster than my 10 watt solar panel, as you might expect. By example, my 60,000 milliamp hour power bank charged from about halfway full to full way in just a few hours. So that's pretty good. So everything here performed as expected. All output ports worked as designed. Then I tried charging multiple devices at once. I have my phone, my 10,000 milliamp hour battery bank and my 60,000 milliamp hour bank all connected plugged in at the same time so that's something you could do if you wanted to however by design when charging multiple devices at the same time you should expect much longer charging times because everything that's plugged into this one thing is sharing all the available power so when possible my personal recommendation is to charge only one device at a time. I find this to be the most efficient use of any portable solar panel. But certainly, you can opt to charge multiple devices at the same time if you like. I also tested the red light to make sure that it was operating the way it should. So I put it directly in the sun, light come on like right away. And then I turned it and sort of folding it up and watching, you know, uh, diminishing the amount of sunlight that was on the panel. And eventually it went off. So the light worked fine, exactly the way it's supposed to. So let's talk about results and my conclusions. I've tested and used a lot of these type of portable solar panels over the years. Some of them were not great. Uh, they don't have the high conversion rate. They are maybe are much lower than expected power output. The durability was kind of sucky, poor construction, low quality materials, etc., etc. Well, this one is not one of those. This unit worked great in all respects. And as advertised and as expected, this is a really good unit. Now, it's not something I would take on a long hike just because of the weight. But I would take it on a shorter hike into a base camp kind of situation, like I mentioned before, where there's a reasonable chance that I will need a lot of power. Or maybe in situations where it wouldn't make sense to carry a whole bunch of charged battery banks. I also use this at home to keep my portable power banks charged for emergencies and to help offset my day-to-day -day power use. Charging my phones, my watches, my other rechargeable devices. For instance, I have a bank of rechargeable batteries that I use for various things around my house. I keep that plugged into my 60,000 milliamp hour power bank that was charged by this solar panel. So there's many common day-to-day -day uses for this panel. And the cost, well, it's relatively inexpensive. And this one small investment will reach ROI in a short amount of time. 
Then, after that, it's free power for as long as the panel will work. The sun for me is a money maker. So this is no brainer kind of stuff for me. I have only one suggestion for improvement with this panel. It doesn't have a built-in stand. I found that if I wanted a good angle with the sun for every panel, it got a little clunky to set up. I would set up one end, got it just right, but the other end would kind of move a little bit. So I had to go back and adjust that. And I had to go back and forth a few times before I got it just right. And I had to brace it up on some objects that I had to go find to make sure it had the right angle. But honestly, the size of this unit is right on the line between it needs a stand and it doesn't need a stand. So this is not a big deal, but I thought it was something that was worth a brief mention here. Okay, folks, it's discount time. Follow the link down below to enter a discount code DAVIDA10 to get 10% off your order. That's a special gift from me to you as a way of saying thank you for watching this video. Okay, so you know what time it is, right? It's time to go live like you want it. <laughs> Alright, I'll see you on the trail. Hey, this is David on Earth. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. And go to the website for some deals on gear. Alright. See you on the trail.